Good evening and welcome to Jerry Sloan Gymnasium. We are getting set for Black Diamond Conference basketball as the Carmichael White County Lady Bulldogs are set to face off against the Hamilton County Lady Foxes. Cole Carter alongside Jason Craig, Hayley Winkleman, and the lovely Whitney Carter with us. Those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel, Joby Wagner is back at the WRUL studio. The pregame show is brought to you by Rice Motors. Take ricemotors.com for a test drive now and give Rice a try before you buy. You'll be glad you did. Lady Bulldogs are conference champions, 8-0 in the BDC East after a big win back on Thursday against Edwards County. And uh, Jason trying to go from 0-10 in the conference last year, trying to go unbeaten the BDC this year. Tonight against Hamilton County and Thursday against Flora, uh, but a chance to step, make that step in the right direction tonight. Yeah, these two games, especially tonight's game, does have some implications. This is the last ball game you get to put on the resume for the uh, postseason. Mm -hmm. The regionals draw comes out Thursday, and it would look a very good looking 23 and four, but. Also, it, it wouldn't look too shabby to be one step closer to the perfect conference season as well. Yeah, as Jason <laughs> mentioned, those regional pairings will come out on Thursday afternoon. And Dr. Clinton Wolf back on Thursday. He really likes the, their chances to be a top four seed. You have some other teams in that subsectional, uh, including Mount Carmel, who has beaten Carmichael twice. But you get that top four seed. You don't have to play that first Saturday game. And it's just like, you know, NFL, home, home field advantage. You, the the <laughs> better you can be, the higher seed you can get, the better are you off for the postseason. Yeah, I did a little digging around this afternoon in there, and I definitely can't see how they cannot be a top four team. But what's very intriguing is the Mount Carmel, yes, we've lost two to them, but Robinson is up here, and Robinson has beaten Mount Carmel twice. And, you know, there's weird things that always happen at these things. You know, teams kind of beat up, pair up, and kind of stick it to the man, so to speak. But, you know, who knows? It could all smoke and clear, and Carmi could end up being a 1C, but I don't see them, in my opinion, being any less than a 3C. As far as Hamilton County, they are 11-13 and 13 on the year, 3-5 and five in the Black Diamond Conference. Carmi beat them earlier in the year, 57-43. to 43. Uh, But, Jason, it's one of those things where you can't really overlook anybody in terms of record, especially in this gym. It's a tough place to play. You ask anybody who's ever played – anywhere not named Hamilton County. This is a very tough gym to play. I don't know if it's, you know, the atmosphere. Everyone tells you the baskets are weird here when they play, but it's just one of those places where you can't really sleepwalk. you got to come out and be ready to play. Yeah, and that goes boys' side as yep. well as girls' side. And, you know, this is not your every season Hamilton County team either. Normally they reload. Clint Weinmiller, he's been doing this for 16 years, 300-plus wins. He doesn't have that interior presence that he's had in the past, so they've kind of gone to a perimeter-style play. And Racy Phelps, who's a sophomore, has pretty much carried the load. She's averaging about 16 points a game. And the other what-if with this team is a handful, probably three players that have had three years of experience didn't come back to play their senior year, and that really set them back. But, you know, when you're that close to 500, with a group that's learning similar to what the girls, Carmi girls went through last year, yep. that's not bad, especially here in the Black Diamond, but the key tonight is to keep Racy Phelps in check, in my opinion. <laughs> We're talking about experience, and, and Carmi has that to an extent. They're a young team, but you talk about a young team full of young girls who have been through a lot in terms of big games, uh, whether it's volleyball, softball, or here in the basketball season. They're very experienced for being young, but one of those experienced older gals is Mara Serafini being a senior. She's the leading scorer on the team. She's inching near that 1,000 point mark. And as the year has got on, Jason, she has really taken over that leadership role, uh, both in the locker room and on the court as well. Yeah, she has showed a lot of poise. Um, it's amazing how quickly she's gone from a freshman to senior, like they all do. But I think her leadership has really helped the younger girls on this squad. And what really stands out to me is the Carmi girls have been able to win the games they're expected to win. They are winning the games that are nail biters. Uh, you know, here the last couple games, five point game, five point game, three point game, they, they're they maintaining composure. And that's very difficult to teach to a young team. And Carmi is well ahead in their years here. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna pay them dividends here for the rest of the season. Lady Bulldogs 22 and four on the year. They are eight and zero in the Black Diamond Conference. Trying to take one more step towards that unbeaten conference record. 
Flag is being lowered at midcourt. We will step aside for the national anthem. We'll be back here in about three minutes for the starters in the opening tip between Carmi and Hamilton County right here on 97.3 WRUL. Your partner in auto repair. That's Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. You get service, expertise, and I promise you'll drive away satisfied. Complete engine and body repair, 24-hour-a-day wrecker and towing service, tires from sales and service, and repair including muffler service, brakes, shocks, suspension, and more. When quality counts, count on Cherry Street Automotive in Carmi. Your partner in auto repair. Call 382-7165 today. Citizens National Bank of Albion has always been in the business of making dreams come true. Are you like many in the community that have dreamed of owning your own business? Bring your ideas in and speak to one of our commercial loan professionals in Albion, Alney, Crossville, and Bridgeport. Our competitive rates and solid decision making will make it the best decision you ever made. Let us help you get started and we'll watch your business grow. Citizens National Bank of Albion, no better banking. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. I'm Nancy J. Winter CPA. We believe in family values, even in the world of finance, because every financial decision impacts your family. For all the milestones in your life, our team is here to maximize your savings, minimize your taxes, and help you plan for a prosperous future. Visit Nancy J. Winter CPA in Carmi for tax planning, saving for college, retirement planning, and the expertise to help get you where you want to be. Learn more at nancyjwinnercpa.com or call 382-2364. Nancy J. Winter CPA, where you are treated like family. Great teamwork is no accident. David and the gang at Hale Body Shop salute the area athletes. Just as in sports, the team at Hale Body Shop work together to make sure you get your car back as quickly as possible. When it comes to collision repair, more and more people choose the team way out there on Possum Road. Hale Body Shop in Karma. David and the gang are proud supporters of area athletes. Roark Trucking and Roark Transport in Carmi. Driving the distance, delivering the difference. Commercial or residential. In Hydra's propane and fuel. Rock, dirt, and lime. Parking lots, driveways, and washouts. Farmers depend on Roark Trucking and Roark Transport to deliver their lime when and where they need it. Remember Roark Trucking and Roark Transport for your next job or your next haul. Fast and dependable. Call Roark Transport and Roark Trucking. 618-265-3665. We're back here in McLeansboro. Jerry Sloan Gymnasium on the campus of Hamilton County High School getting set for the opening tip between the Lady Bulldogs and the Lady Foxes. Cole Carter, Jason Craig with you. This has been the Rice Motors pregame show as the starting five for the Lady Bulldogs, their usual suspects. Johanna Smith, the 5'3 senior, Addie Elliott. A 5'4 sophomore, Caroline Simmons, a 5'5 sophomore, Mara Serafini, 5'7 senior, and Ashlyn Rager, a 5'9 junior. So for Clinton Wolf, that's Rager, Serafini, Simmons, Elliott, and Smith. A couple seniors, a couple sophomores, and one junior. So we'll introduce the Hamilton County starting five. Kaylin Nichols wearing number two. She is a 5'6 sophomore. The aforementioned Racy Phelps, 5'7 sophomore. Number 10, Kyla Parkhill, a 5'7 junior. As well as number 20, Peyton Hartman, a 5'8 senior. And number 31, Kaylee Brake, a 5'9 senior. That's break, Harmon, Park Hill, Phelps, and Nichols for head coach Clint Weinmiller. And like we mentioned in the pregame, Cole, you know, that interior force that Hamilton County has always had last year was Cindy Downton. She graduated the year before her, Brianna Blades, another big inside player presence is this McLeansboro or Hamilton County, whichever one you want to call. <laughs> this doesn't have it this year, so, you know, you got to re rethink your plan, so to speak. Yeah, some fans <laughs> might recall they had a fantastic season last year, a 20-plus win campaign. Well, you mentioned a lot of those players not returning this year, so a little bit of youth and experience for them. 
Actually, but. our first time seeing Hamilton County this year when they played back in Carmine. That was uh, during the, I believe, the Duke coin tip-off when we were in doing the boys game for that. So our first chance to see them this year. Serafini wins the tip at midcourt. Carmine and their road maroons going left to right here in the first half. And we'll see they do offensively here on their first possession. They go down low to Caroline Simmons, and she draws a foul right off the bat. Two free throws coming up for Caroline Simmons. And Coach Weinmiller going with his defensive specialist, Park Hill. She's an athlete, uh, three-sport athlete. Track is her thing. She is one of those sneaky, quick players, and she's going to have Simmons duty tonight. <laughs> That's not an easy task to have. First free throw for Caroline up is up and good. These are brought to you by Expressway Ford. Don't get fouled by a bad buying experience. Count on Expressway Ford Mercury. You'll always be in the bonus. Second free throw for Simmons is good as well. 2-0, Carmine White County. We've played 15 seconds here in the first quarter. Phelps into the front court, comes near side to Nichols. Carmine comes out in a man-to-man. -man. Top of the circle, Park Hill with it. Back to Harmon, now in the far corner of the go. This is Phelps with it. Phelps goes left, now back to her right, leaves it off for Harmon. Top of the circle, now in the hands of Park Hill. Looks it around near corner, Nichols has it. Dribbles to her right. Near side back to Park Hill, trying to find some room inside. Dishes it off the break. Now they go opposite. Carmine playing defense for close to 45 seconds already here on this first possession. Driving on the right side. Harmon going to fire for three on the right wing. It's no good. Johanna Smith grabs the rebound. Into the front court comes Smith. 2-0 Lady Bulldogs. One minute got here in the first quarter. Smith left top, now it's off to Serafini. She'll try a left wing three, it's good. First bank three-pointer, Mara Serafini. And it's five nothing Lady Dogs. Nice offensive set there, Serafini got a wide open look and nailed it. Break drives inside. They go to Harmon here near top. Off the break, back on the right top. Cutting his nickels, trying to get inside, leaves it up on the far side to Harmon. Now top of the key, Park Hill fires a three, it won't go. And fighting for the offensive rebound there was Phelps, and she goes up and draws a foul. Phelps has got a high IQ when it comes to basketball. She crashed the rim, went opposite, and now she's going to try to earn it the hard way from the charity stripe. I don't think Carmi has had their issues with, really in the second half of the season, allowing offensive rebounds as Phelps hits the first. Makes it 5-1. to one. Like we've seen here, Cole, in the first two series down for Hamilton County, they're running the five-out offense all along the three-point line. Phelps goes two for two. Foxes will pick him up at midcourt. 6.20 left to play here in the first quarter. 5-2 Lady Bulldogs. Simmons far top, nearly taken away. Now it's off to Serafini who drives baseline. Her shot rejected by Park Hill. Her correction, it was break. Park Hill went to try to save it, but it went out of bounds. It will stay with the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, Brake just signed to play softball next year. She is probably the most interior enforcer Hamco has. They go inside to Serafini. That one's taken away by Nichols. Lady Foxes come the other way. Park Hill into the front court. Phelps over in the far corner. It's Brake. Now Nichols near side to Harmon. Harmon dribbling to her right off the break. Met there by Ashton Rager. As Jason mentioned, you see them sticking with that five-out flex-type offense as the drive and the foul on the floor will go against Carmine. And that could be an advantage Hamco takes. Break a little more quick-footed than Rager is normally, and Rager's probably not the most perimeter defensive-orientated player there is. Inbounds pass <laughs> knocked away, but they get it right back into the hands of Break, who goes right at Rager, who committed that first foul. Break. Hits the basket, it's a one-point game. Nice aggressive move there by Break. takes it to the rim. Five to four, your score, 30 seconds gone here in the first quarter. Breaker on the far top, now left corner, it goes to Smith. They get Serafini open on an elevator screen, <laughs> and she hits another first bank three. Morris feeling it here in the first half of the first quarter. You get her going <laughs> off an elevator screen, there's not many threes she can't hit. Harmon drives out to break, trying to answer. She can't. Long rebound comes to your side, and it's knocked away out of bounds by Park Hill. We'll go back over to Carmi White County. 5.07 left to play here in the first quarter. 
And the Lady Foxes will apply some full court pressure. Expected to see this at some point in the evening. Elliott nearly take it away, able to control it back over to Smith. Now up ahead to Simmons. Four on two. Elliott goes in the far corner to Serafini. Back to Elliott, and they'll reset the offense. Three minutes gone here in the first quarter. 8-4, Lady Bulldogs. Smith here in the near side. Leaves it off for Rager. Thought about it. Now it's off to Elliott. Left side, Simmons. See, Carmichael. Kind of going five wide as well. Rager steps outside and tries a three. It's no good. Simmons had the offensive rebound momentarily, but it's taken away by Phelps. And the Foxes come the other way. Phelps tries to go coast to coast, puts it up, and can't get the friendly bounce. Rager with the rebound. Now Elliott trying to push the floor up ahead to Simmons. Caroline's layup blocked, and then the rebound is grabbed by Brake. Lady Fox is on the run. Brake in the far corner off to Phelps. One of the three, Serafini right there on her. Phelps tries to get open in the corner. That pass deflected, nearly stolen by Serafini. Still loose in the corner. Now Phelps drives baseline. Got away with a travel, but a foul going to be called against Caroline Simmons. You see Ragers have got it in her head already with that first early foul. She kind of just stood there, didn't want to try to pick up the second one. Well, Ashland has been more games that she is in foul trouble, that she isn't in foul trouble. That's the first free throw there by Phelps is up and good. And Phelps is smart enough. She realizes how many fouls people have. It's, that's just not a given trait. The good ones know, and they'll take it right at them. Second free throw, no good. Rebound by Addie Elliott. Lady Bulldogs bring it into the front court. Under four to play here in the first quarter. 8-5 Lady Bulldogs. Nice pass inside to Mara Serafini, who's got eight here in the first quarter alone. 10-5 Carmi. Nichols in the far corner. Now top of the key to break. They go near side Park Hill. Near corner, Harmon tries a three. It won't go. Nice box out by Serafini for the rebound. CWC pushing the floor. Elliott goes left top to Johanna Smith. Leaves it off for Simmons now, cutting inside. Far corner, Serafini. Heat check on the way, and she wow. hits another. Bowling, they call it the turkey. <laughs> <laughs> another first bank, three-pointer, three dollars from first bank. The Carmel-White County Unit 5 School District, 13-5 Lady Bulldogs. Driving in as Phelps throws one up off balance. No good, rebounded by Elliott. Morris got 11 of Carmel's 13. And she's got it on the far top. Lobs it toward the middle now in the hands of Johanna Smith. Elliott, far corner back to Serafini. Top of the circle to get it in the hands of Simmons. Now left top, Elliott. Shot fake, tries to go baseline. Cut off there by break. She'll pull it back out. Now it's Smith between the circles. Left side, Serafini. Drives the left hand, shot up and good again. Mara Serafini. It might be one of those nights. <laughs> 13 for Serafini here in the first quarter. Nichols goes on the far side to break. Great defense on the drive by Rager, but they get it off to Nichols left open. Her three no good. And we're getting over the back call against Harmon. Fox is having a little rough time at it beyond the arc, 0 for 4. Well, kind of one of those underrated dominant factors from Carmi this year has been their defense and the way that not only can they create stops, create turnovers, but turn those turnovers into baskets the other way. Elliott here near side. Top of the key, Serafini three, short offensive rebound. Elliott, she goes back up, and the smallest girl on the court with the putback. Nice job by Elliott to get involved. Don't normally expect it on the offensive boards, though. <laughs> <laughs> Open three near side from Park Hill, another Hamilton County miss. As Carmi pushes the floor once again, they're up 17 to five. Near side, here's Elliott. Dribbles off to her left, back near corner. Serafini for three, <laughs> never missed two in a row. <laughs> Mara Serafini, 16 first quarter points, and Clint Weinmiller needs a timeout. All of a sudden, Carmi White County up by 15, 20 to five, 91 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. We'll take a timeout as well. It's brought to you by Rush Apply. It's back in 30 seconds. 
You can buy more of what you want when you save on what you need. Save on meal ingredients by shopping Little Giant Grocery Outlet in Carmi. Little Giant's team of buyers are constantly scanning wholesalers, looking for pantry favorites and meal ingredients at astonishing savings just so you can shop confidently, knowing that you can come in anytime and find great deals from fresh cuts of meat and grocery items to deli, fresh produce and frozen goods. See just how much more your dollar buys at Little Giant Grocery, Carmi, Illinois. One thirty-one left to play here in the first quarter. It's been the Mara Serafini show. 16 points for the senior as the Lady Bulldogs lead it 20-5. Lady Fox is bringing it to the front court with Nichols. Now it's off to Phelps here near side. Phelps dribbles over to the right, hands it back off into the hands of Nichols. Now it's break between the circles. Near top, they go to Harmon. She dribbles to her right, picks up her dribble. Now it's back off to Phelps. Guarded there by Serafini. Phelps wanted to pull up for three. Now pulls up Mara, blocks her from behind. Phelps gets it back and somehow finds her way <laughs> out of the basket to lay it up and in. Nice play by Phelps, sticking with it. Nice block by Serafini, just wound up in the wrong hands. <laughs> Phelps has five. And it's a 20 to seven ball game. Simmons here near top. Drives inside, leaves it off for Elliott. In the near corner they go to Johanna Smith. Now it's off to Simmons, back to Smith. Smith dribbles to her left, leaves it off for Elliott, looks over the defense. Carmine might just hold for one shot here. Down to 30 seconds left in the quarter. Elliott, right top. Leave it off to Rager, now in the far corner it goes to Smith. Down low, Simmons found herself open and hits the layup. Nice off execution of flex there. 22 to seven Lady Bulldogs, final 13 seconds. Here in the first quarter, Harmon on the right side, driving inside, her layup, no good off the glass, rebound tipped, and putting it back up and in with the offensive rebound, Ada Ashcraft, and that will end the first quarter. Lady Bulldogs lead it 22 to nine. We'll go to the second quarter back in one minute on 97.3 WRUL. In 1925, when Farrell Hospital opened, they knew that families in El Dorado and the surrounding communities needed a hospital they could depend on, close to home. Over the years, Farrell grew to meet the needs of patients. Today, Farrell Hospital has grown to offer advanced emergency care, orthopedics, cancer, surgery, imaging, lab, and more, always keeping more care right here close to home. Farrell Hospital, you can depend on us. What you need, when you need it. Wabash Christian Therapy on Oak Street in Carmi has what you need. From outpatient therapy serving pediatrics to geriatrics, when you need it. Flexible hours for your convenience, state-of-the-art equipment, private treatment rooms, and personalized programs tailored to fit you and delivered by a therapy team committed to compassionate care. Wabash Christian Therapy on Oak Street in Carmi. Learn more by calling 382-2927 today or search Wabash Christian Therapy on Facebook. Wabash Christian Therapy in Carmi. Better every Day. Start of the second quarter, Lady Bulldogs leading Hamilton County 22 to 9. Cole Carter, Jason Craig with you. Lady Foxes had the basketball as we start the second quarter of play. We go to Racy Phelps trying to get inside off to Harmon. Her mid range jumper no good, and the offensive woes continue. For Hamilton County, Lady Bulldogs pushing the floor. Addie Elliott going coast to coast and one. Carmi continues the hot shooting. They were 75% from the field in the first quarter, eight for 12. One of their best shooting nights of the whole season thus far. And the free throw for Elliott. Good as gold. Brought to you by Expressway Ford. Five points for Elliott, 25 to nine. All Lady Bulldogs here in the first half. Phelps over on the far top. Leaves it off for Harmon between the circles. She dribbles to her right. Gets a screen from Ashcraft. Now it's at the top of the circle. Break near side. Nichols has it now. Nichols driving in. They come back near corner. Break. Puts it on the floor. They swing it around. Phelps down the far top. Dribbles left. Back right. Picks it up. Leaves it off in the hands of Nichols. Now it's Break. Driving to the right side. 
Getting inside was Phelps, open deep two that time from Harmon gets the bounce. Foot on the line, Peyton Harmon gets her first basket. And the Foxes pulled the press off, that's interesting. They do sit back, looks like in a box and one type of offense, yeah. trying to deny Mario Serafini. But they go in the post to Ashlyn Rager, and she lays it up and in. Carmi doing a nice job sharing the wealth. <laughs> Everyone getting involved. 27 to 11. We've played 30 or 90 seconds here in the second quarter, and Mara Serafini going to pick up the foul as she tumbles over Ashcraft. The Park Hill check it back in. First foul on Mara, first foul in this second quarter. Phelps has it on the right top. Carter by Serafini. Dribbles to her right. Now goes back to her left. Off the break between the circles. Now near side. Left top Park Hill. Back near side Ashcraft. They're going to leave break open for three at the top of the key. And she hits. First triple of the night for the Foxes. They've had some good looks. They Just have. a matter of getting the shots to go. 27 to 14. Johanna Smith left top. Now it's off to Caroline Simmons. Are my sticking to their flex offense here. Rager left top. Now it's off to Serafini on the right side. Back left side, Elliott. Ball above her head in the far corner. It goes to Rager. Jab step and a drive. Shot on the way from Rager. Too hard. A rare miss from the Lady Bulldogs. And Hamilton County comes the other way. Harmon near side to break. Dribbles off to her right. Now it's Phelps. She'll fire a three with Serafini all over her. And she hits it. Not much more Serafini could have done. Hand in the face, and Phelps knocks it down. Gracie Phelps has eight. And the Elmwood County trying to stay alive. 27-17, 5-16 to go here in the second quarter. As Smith got that one taken away. This is Phelps on the fast break. Phelps puts it up and puts it in. And Clinton Wolf needs a timeout. Great response from Hamilton County. Lady Fox is back within eight, 27-19. 5.05 left to play here in the second quarter. We'll step aside for a 30-second break on 97.3 WRUL. Big City Services in a small town. That's Butch and Associates CPAs, providing superior client service to folks here at home and across the U.S. Taxes and bookkeeping, accounting and audit services, plus full-service consulting. Butch and Associates CPAs, where expertise meets excellence. At Butch and Associates, it's your journey back by our commitment. Visit butch.com to learn more and contact us today. Five oh five left to play here in the second quarter. Lady Bulldogs leading Hamilton County, twenty-seven to nineteen. A little bit of a run put on by the Lady Foxes, getting them back in the ball game, and they apply their full court pressure back on, but Carmi gets into the front court with these with Caroline Simmons. Near top, it goes to Ashlyn Rager. Rager dribbles it, leaves it off for Elliott. She'll fire a right wing three. It's no good. Rebound tipped into the hands of Simmons. Nice, nice no-look pass to Ashlyn Rager for the layup. Nice unselfish play there by Simmons. Found Rager wide open for a nice putback. Four points for Rager. Lead back to 10, 29-19, four and a half left to play here in the second quarter. Harmon dribbles to her right, picks up her dribble. Now it's off to break, dribbling to her left. Near side, Phelps has it, trying to create some separation, guarded by Serafina, but Mara all over. Now it's break. Off of the right side to Harmon, getting inside. Harmon's layup, no good, rimmed out. Nice drive and take by Harmon, but couldn't get it to go. Lady Bulldogs at the other end. Here's Elliott. She gets bumped in the far corner. Ball goes out of bounds. And is that a foul? Yes. Going to get a foul on Kyla Parkhill. That'll be her second. Second Hamilton County foul in the second quarter. Smith will inbound. Gets into the far corner. Serafini leaves it off for Elliott here near side. Elliott dribbles back to her right. Now it's in the near corner to Rager. 
Simmons found herself open down low in the good pass and layup by Caroline Simmons, who's got six. That was a nice touch pass there by Rager. Difficult angle and hit Simmons like quarterback to receiver. Park Hill driving inside, leaves it off now. Harmon will try a right wing three off the mark. And the rebound was chased down by Elliott, but then taken away by Phelps. She'll put one up, no good. And we're going to foul on the rebound as Rager went up, got bumped. Ball goes back over to Carmine. I mentioned, you know, Hamilton County, they're getting open looks from beyond the arc, but, you know, that's not always the best shot, the first open look to get. Elliott into the front court. They break the pressure again. And they'll swing it around. 3.20 left to play here in the second quarter, 31-19. Simmons down low. Quadruple team turns around and was looking for a foul. No whistle. Lady Fox has come the other way. Harmon picks it up over to Park Hill. Far corner, break for three. No good, another quick three. Smith the rebound. Outlet pass up ahead to Serafini. Mara picks up her dribble, wants to go cross court. Now finds Simmons, nice dump off to Elliott. Her shot blocked and then rebounded by Harmon. 2.48 left to play here in the second, 31-19 as Phelps pulls up for three, and it's off the mark and goes out of bounds in the far corner. Rush three, rush three, rush three. Last three possessions for Hamilton County. Yeah, you put all your eggs in the basket at 22 feet. You better make at least half of them, and they're not making half of them. <laughs> <laughs> Jaya Smith will check in for the Lady Bulldogs. Yaddy Elliott will get a breather. 2.37 left to play here in the second quarter. Simmons walks it across the timeline. Left top, they go to Rager. Now near side, Smith with it. Cutting down low as Rager catches it, turns. Too hard on the layup. And the rebound by Phelps. And Phelps will be fouled on the far baseline, or far sideline by Jaya Smith. Yeah, give credit to the Foxes. They were in a decent sized hole, yep. and you know, to only be down 12 with 2.20. They kind of put the clamps on Serafini, and they hit a couple buckets here. This suddenly becomes a ball game. Yeah, Mara had 16 in that first quarter, hasn't scored since. Nichols over on the far side, Harmon getting inside, fouled, and let's we'll see if they call it on the shot or on the floor. And they're going to say on the floor. It's Jaya Smith, her second. Second foul in about 15 seconds, actually, is got a Hamilton County sub. This will be Annabelle Woodrow checking in. 5'9 freshman. So Harmon will inbound. 2.09 left to play in the half. Harmon gets it in. Woodrow, or correction, that was Phelps who missed the shot. And Rager grabs the rebound. Two minutes left to go here in the first half. Simmons. Driving inside, two-step to the basket, and she banks it in. Eight points for Caroline Simmons. 33-19, Lady Bulldogs. Phelps trying to find her way to the basket, does, and banks it in. Phelps starting to become a little more involved in the offense, a little passive early on. Now she's starting to take some responsibility on the offensive end. Phelps has 12. The Lady Bulldog lead is 12, 33-21. 90 seconds left to play here in the first half. Rager, left top, just waiting there. Carmine in no hurry here. Really no reason to be. Get over to Smith in the far corner. Johanna drives, leaves it off for Serafini here near top. Carmine might just hold this one down as far as they can. Never mind, as Simmons drives inside, he gets it taken away by Harmon. Up ahead to Phelps, one on two. Phelps going right at Serafini. No foul once again, rebound by Simmons. And she's got Smith open in front of the pack. She gets it to her, and Johanna lays it in. That's why they tell you to dribble with your head up. <laughs> All five starters in the scorebook for the Lady Bulldogs, 35-21. Break goes cross court to Woodrow. Puts on the floor, now it's off to Nichols. Nichols pulls it back. They go between the circles to break with 33 seconds. Do they want to hold for one shot here? Down by 14. Harmon dribbling to her right. Simmons gets through the screen. They go down low to break. That layup off the side of the rim and then rebounded by Rager. 
18 seconds. Now Clinton Wolf says one shot. 35 21 Lady Bulldogs. 10 seconds left to play here in the half. Serafini hands it off to Simmons in the basket, and she draws a foul. Caroline Simmons back to the free throw line with 3.9 on the clock. Nice give and go there. Fundamental two on two basketball. So two expressway forward free throws coming up for Caroline Simmons. First one up and good. Caroline's got nine. And Clinton Wolf trying to make a couple of subs to avoid some silly fouls here in the final four seconds. We'll put Addie Elliott back in the ball game. Tori Ryder will check in. Natalie Gomat set the check in. Second free throw by Simmons. She goes two for two. And Gomat will get her. 3.9 left. Phelps will let it roll. Picks it up at the volleyball line. Dribbles to her left. Stops at the Fox logo and fires and hits the front of the rim. And the first half comes to an end. Lady Bulldogs lead by 16 behind Mara Serafini's 16. 37 21. We'll step aside for a three minute break. The Jordan Funeral Group halftime show coming up next on 97.3 WRUL. Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics are growing to meet the needs of our communities. We're proud to continue to expand by offering acute, urgent care services by welcoming Dr. Brian Sloan to our McLeansboro Family Clinic location. With over 20 years of emergency medicine experience, Dr. Sloan provides acute, urgent care visits for those times when you can't wait to feel better. From colds and sore throats to care after sports-related injuries and more, Hamilton Memorial Hospital Family Clinics. Here for you now, like we've always been. To schedule an appointment, call 618-643 2988. Welcome to Taylor Eye Care on Falcon Avenue in Carmi. Excellence in eye care. From thorough examinations utilizing advanced equipment and technology to premier optical products. Here at Taylor Eye Care, we treat every patient like family, going above and beyond the expected for a truly memorable eye care experience. Simply put, we are excellence in eye care. If you're looking to brighten and enhance your vision, don't hesitate to contact us today. 382-4683. Doing business in today's world can be complicated, time-consuming, and expensive. People's National Bank is here to help your business not only survive, but thrive. With modern-day products such as remote deposit capture, ACH payments, merchant card services, and commercial line of credit sweeps, we can get you paid faster, protect your risk, and make your money work hard for you. Hi, this is Melinda with People's National Bank. Give me a call today and get started. People's National Bank, member FDIC. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years. Rush Appliance and Furniture stands the test of time. We have a large selection of in-stock furniture and appliances for every room in your home. Grills and smokers and an unmatched dedication to superior service. This is Sean Rush inviting you to visit me in Fairfield or my dad Terry in Carmi where we can help you furnish every room in your house with superb service after the sale. Whether you're a competitive athlete or want to enjoy a stroll around your neighborhood, orthopedic health is critical to your quality of life. The orthopedic and sports medicine team at Wabash General Hospital treats injuries and disorders of the bones, joints, ligaments, tendons, muscles, and spine so you can return to moving through life with greater comfort and ease. To schedule an appointment, call 618-263-6400. Wabash General Hospital, people you know, helping people you love. Before you drive a nail, drive to Carmi Lumber. From cabinets and flooring, doors and paint, lumber and hardware, to shingles and siding. Knowledgeable and friendly staff that have your back on all those home projects. And even deliver to your door. So before you drive a nail, drive to Carmi Lumber. For the woods, the goods, and the know-how. Visit Carmi Lumber, North 3rd Street in Carmi and CarmiLumber.net. Halftime here in Hamilton County. Lady Bulldogs with the Lady Foxes 37-21. Cole Carter, Jason Craig with you. This is the Jordan Funeral Group Halftime Show. Remembering lives well lived and honoring 
Tradition of Bulldog Sports. Visit Jordan Funeral Group. JordanFederalGroup.com for more. Look at the individual stat line there in the first half. Hamilton County led by Racy Phelps, who had 12 points. Five points from Kaylee Brake, two from Peyton Harmon, and two from Ada Ashcraft. For the Lady Bulldogs, 16 points from Mara Serafini all came in that first quarter. Ten from Caroline Simmons, five from Addie Elliott, four from Ashton Rager, and two from Johanna Smith. Jason, got team stats? For Hamilton County, they were eight for 26 from the field for 31%. That includes two for 12 from beyond the arc. They were 75% from the free throw line, shooting three out of four. Ten total rebounds, six of those on the defensive end, and I didn't have any turnovers for the Foxes in the first half. For Carmi, 14 for 23 from the field, 61%. That includes four for seven from beyond the arc. Perfect five for five from the charity strike. Total of 14 rebounds, 12 of those on the defensive end, and the Lady Bulldogs with three turnovers. The turnovers number really, I don't. I think you're correct. Neither team has really turned the ball over that much of taking good care of the ball, but it's been a lot of quick shots and a lot of missed shots, especially for Hamilton County. Yeah, and you know, you really can't fault. There was maybe a couple times down the floor the Lady Foxes came down and maybe shot it a little early in the shot clock, so to speak, but for the most part, their shots are open. They're yep. getting good looks from beyond. You just, like we mentioned, you know, you want to try to hit 40% of your threes, and they're not doing it tonight. On the other hand, the Lady Bulldogs are definitely doing that. <laughs> and, you know, it just seemed from the get-go with Mara, 16 points, and you just start wondering about, oh, wow, this could be. And all of a sudden, she disappears in the second quarter. I got a very good inkling that uh, Mara's going to reappear in the third quarter. <laughs> well, you got to tip your cap to Clint, My Clint Weimiller's squad there for – not backing down. They got in a pretty deep hole there at the end of the first quarter. Got it back to within nine uh, there in the second. Actually, eight there in the second quarter. Carmi able to go that back to 16, though, thanks to some other girls around Serafini finding themselves open. Yeah, the Foxes tried one little time down the court, a box and one, to see if that would do any good, and it didn't. And that kind of motivated them to go back to switching man to man. And that kind of put the brakes on Carmi's output a little bit, but toward the end, Carmine was doing a nice job with the interior passing. You know, Rager standing out here at three-point line, throwing dimes into Simmons for lay-ins. And, you know, those are the little things that you can kind of just look at during a ball game. But when it starts getting down here to the end of the year, when you get into your postseason play, those are the things that are difference makers between advancing in a regional or going home early. <laughs> in your halftime score, Lady Bulldogs lead at 31-27. This is the Jordan Group halftime show looking at the broadcast schedule for the rest of the week. Tomorrow night, we'll be at the friendly confines of McDougal Evers as the Edwards County Lions come to town to face the Bulldogs. And on Thursday, the Flora Wolfgals come to town for a conference battle with the Lady Bulldogs. And then the Flora Boys team will come into McDougal Evers on Friday for another conference matchup. Then a former conference matchup, old NEC rival as the Bulldogs travel to Mount Carmel Saturday afternoon to take on the Golden Aces. Another busy week of Bulldog and Lady Bulldog basketball this week. All those games can be listened to on 97.3 WRUL and watched on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. We'll step aside for a three-minute break. Second half coming up next. Hello Bulldog fans, this is Kyle Hosick with Country Financial. It's been great coming back to my hometown of Carmi, supporting our Bulldogs as well as my current and future clients. Whether you're looking for auto or home insurance, insurance for your business, life insurance or a retirement plan, I can help. I take pride in quality customer service and promise to listen to what's important to you while ensuring you have the right coverages. Stop by my office to see what sets us apart. Country Financial Representative Kyle Hosick, 603 West Main in Carmi. Welcome to Pro Rehab Carmi, where our passion is getting you back to life faster. It is our privilege to walk with you every step of the way using evidence-based treatments specifically created just for you. Whether it's sports, general orthopedics, or pelvic floor rehab, you are in the right hands. Your results are worth fighting for, and our team fights for you. Call 384-7872 or visit Pro Rehab on Main in Carmi and get back to life 
faster. Shop, click, drive. It's that simple with RiceMotors.com. Picks and pricing updated several times a day. Even vehicles in transit. You get the first look when you shop RiceMotors.com. Got an idea of what you're looking for? Want to schedule a service appointment? You can do it all. Rice Motors has served the region for 90 years. And with RiceMotors.com, it's never been easier for you to shop. Click, drive, RiceMotors.com. Visit now. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply, we proudly sell Skag and Spartan mowers. We fully understand the key to repeat and referral business is a strong parts and service department. This is also crucial to help keep your machine in top condition. Our multi-point winter service program is currently in full swing with one of the most competitive prices in the area. We have certified technicians on staff and we use brand specific products to keep that warranty fully intact. Pickup and delivery are available. Call 618-380-2133 or stop by 610 East Main today. Southern Illinois Trading and Supply in Karma, Illinois. We are seriously overstocked at Expressway Ford. Choose from our huge selection of new and pre-owned Fords. Like this one owner 2020 Ford Escape SE all-wheel drive, only $17,990. Or this 2021 Ford Explorer XLT, only $25,990. Or loaded 2020 Ford Edge SEL all-wheel drive, reduced to $29,90. See our huge inventory at expresswayfordonline.com. Everything is priced to sell during our SOS sale. Expressway Ford, more Fords for less. You don't live to bank, you bank to live. And that's why so many of our customers rely on First Mid for much more than banking alone. Beyond everyday financial services, we're a valued partner and advisor with the help and resources for the things you need and whatever you aspire to achieve. So whether you're buying groceries or budgeting your dream kitchen, protecting your life's work or laying the foundation for life after work, we're your bank for everything in the middle of anything. We're First Mid. First Mid Bank and Trust, member FDIC. Equal housing lender. Start of the second half, Laney Bulldogs have the ball in a 16 point lead. 37 30, or correction, 37 21. As Caroline Simmons has it on the far side, now it's Rager. Near side to Johanna Smith. Serafini, top of the key for three, and Jason I, was I, correct. I, she was not going to be quiet much <laughs> longer. Can't say I told you so, but. <laughs> First bank three for Mari Serafini. 19 points tonight for the senior. And she inches near that 1,000 point mark. Nichols down low to break, picks up her dribble, and then goes opposite to Harmon. In the far corner, it's Nichols. Or correction, that's Parkland. Now back to Harmon. Break, top of the key. Near corner, they go to Nichols. Dribbles, picks it up, fires a three, and they answer with a three. Foxes back to their full court pressure. They get it up near midcourt with Serafini. It's back to her point guard, Smith, and clears out. Smith comes near top to Simmons. Caroline dribbles to her right, off to Elliott. Thought about the three. They go opposite corner. This is Rager. Smith, near side Simmons. Top of the key back to Serafini. Drives right. Carmine keeping things simple offensively. Just running a flex type offense. As Smith gets inside, puts a floater up too hard, and the rebound out of bounds. Flip a coin, who touched it last? They say Carmine did. Yeah, it's probably the widest spread flex I've ever seen in 35 years. <laughs> <laughs> 6'17 to play here in the third. 40 24, Lady Bulldogs. Nichols drives baseline, floats one up, short. Rebound grabbed by Caroline Simmons. We've played two minutes here in the third. Still a 16-point lead for Carmichael White County. R. Serafini over to the far top to Elliott. Top of the circle. Find Simmons. Off to Elliott. Her right wing three. No good. Rebound grabbed by Caitlin Nichols for the Hamilton County Lady Foxes. Harmon. Crossover. Getting inside. Leaves it off for break now. Trying to go to the basket. Folks one up. Rager straight up. No call. Rebound to Caroline Simmons. Simmons trying to go against the full court pressure. Throws one to the backcourt. Serafini races for it. And Brake saved it out of bounds. Now, I couldn't tell near midcourt who touched it last and if it was going to be a backcourt violation or not. I thought it was going to be over and back, and Serafini was just going to kind of let it run out. And then I heard Coach Weimiller yelling, you use your head, so I'm assuming 
I don't know why she tried to yeah. pick it up. Lady Bulldogs catch a break. They keep it up by 16, 516 to go in the third. Serafini left top, now near corner at Smith. Tries to go baseline, lost it, but it rolls out to Simmons. Will call it a pass and call it an assist for Johanna Smith as Simmons' foot was on the line. A two-point jump shot. She's got 12. Come out looking very smooth on the offensive end. Good ball movement, and they're finding the open shot. Nichols, top of the circle, comes near side. This is Harmon. Picks it up. Back to Nichols, near corner. Back to Harmon. They swing it around. Break between the circles now. Left top to Phelps. She's been quiet so far here in the third quarter. Step back three, right on cue. And going to get a warning against. I think that was Phelps they called it on. So Phelps has 15. Makes it a 15-point game, 42-27. Smith into the front court. Leaves it off near side to Rager. Jab step off to Simmons. Now goes right top to Addie Elliott. Left wide open. Missed the three, though. Long rebound saved by Simmons. Into the hands of Serafini, who lost it. Then it was Harmon who took it away into the hands of Parkland. He brings it into the front court. They go to Phelps. Left top. Her three. Another one for Racy Phelps, who's starting to heat up. Back to the full court pressure as the Lady Foxes. Serafini in the front court, gets double team, gets rid of it off to Smith. She comes left side to Elliott. Down to a 12 point game, 42 30. Elliott dribbling the left side, off in the hands of Simmons in the near corner. Caroline dribbles it with the right hand. Now goes cross court, corner pass to Serafini. Another first bank three. She's Finding it. I mean, she's passing on some open shots, and she's taking when she wants, and she's making her presence known again. 22 points for Mara Serafini as breaks lay up no good with an offensive rebound grabbed by Nichols. Keeps it alive for the Lady Foxes, and break draws a foul on the drive. Well, the Foxes, the way this game's going, the Foxes have put together two, three stops, in single digits. Makes for a very interesting fourth quarter. They've had their moments for sure, especially on the offensive end, as Harmon left open for a mid-range jumper misses, and Rager grabs the rebound, kind of a soft press by the Lady Foxes, but they get into the front court with these with Caroline Simmons. Rager left top, now near side, Johanna Smith. Serafini fires away and hits <laughs> another! Wow. 25 <laughs> for the senior. And it's 48-30. Phelps tries to answer. She can, or correction, that was Harmon. And the Lady Bulldogs have it by up by 18. 2.35 to play here in the third. As Simmons got it poked away out of bounds into the Carmi bench. I mean, kind of been a case of one step forward, two steps back for Hamilton County in this game. They... They get a small run, get it back within that 10 to 9 point range, but then a couple threes here, a couple threes there. It's, now you're down by 18. Smith right top, now right corner. It goes to Serafini. Back to Smith, near side Simmons. Looking in the post, now dribbles it off, off to Elliott now. Dribbling to her right, now back to her left. Nice drive by Elliott, no foul on the shot. And the rebound by Phelps into the front court. Phelps takes it right at Simmons, lost it, loose ball. Diving on the floor to get it there is, that was Woodrow. We're going to get a foul called against Caroline Simmons. That'll be her third, I think. Nope, second. Scoreboard just says second. 2.07 left to play here in the third quarter. 48-30. Lady Bulldogs with the lead. Swing it left side. Park Hill has it. She drives with the right hand, getting in the lane, throws one up, but foul was called on the drive. That also on, nope, that was Elliott. Couldn't tell if he was holding up four or five. That's Elliott's first. Able to county will inbound from under the basket. Park Hill to inbound. Gets it in near corner. This is Woodrow. Now right top to Phelps. 
Dribbles it back in the near corner. Park Hill dribbling left. Stops, leaves it for Nichols in the far corner. Picks up her dribble. Woodrow will fire a corner three, and it's good. Three-point shot for Annabelle Woodrow. Down to a 15-point game, 48-33. Elliott dribbles off to her right. Now it's in the hands of Mars Serafini once again. Simmons now between the circles, off to Elliott, driving inside. Smith stops, leaves it for Elliott. She'll fire a three, and it's good. <laughs> Elliott able to answer with a triple, a first bank three. Carmi four for six from beyond the arc here in the quarter. One of, if not their best, shooting performance from the season. The Lady Bulldogs leading 51-33. Nichols, thought about pulling up for three. Carmi fans want to travel, think she kept her right foot on the ground, then she turns it over, but then Elliott loses it out of bounds. They say red ball with 49.8 seconds to go here in the third. A couple of subs in the game for Hamilton County. Break back in as well as Harmon. 49.8 seconds left to go here in the third. 51-33, Lady Bulldogs lead it. Smith gets it into Elliott. Comes near side to Serafini. Baseline drive for Mara. Stops. Leaves it off for Smith. Trying to go inside to the middle. Her floater up and good. <laughs> Carmine clicking on all cylinders. Their lead now 20. 53-33. 30 seconds left to go here in the third quarter. Phelps off to break now at the top. They go left side to Phelps. Dribbles to hurt right. Leaves it off for break now on the right top. Comes left side. This is Harmon dribbling. Harmon picks it up near corner. Three-point shot on the way from Woodrow. It's no good. Rebound Elliott with 10 seconds left. Up ahead to Smith with eight seconds. Back to Elliott. Elliott driving inside. Elliott puts one up. Can't bank it in. Loose rebound, and they get it out to Serafini. Got it. They won't count it. They won't count it. I thought she just, just didn't get it off in time. Oh, wow. But it's fun to shoot it anyway. <laughs> so the three-point shot won't count. Into the third quarter, Lady Bulldogs lead by 20, 53-33. We'll step aside for a one-minute break. Fourth quarter coming up. What a hit. Now that's a playmaker. With Hucks Bucks Big Rewards, you can be a playmaker too. Hi folks, I'm Chris Myers. And I'm Cole Carter. Download the Hucks Bucks Big Rewards app now and save with great coupons on gas, snacks, and more. And make sure to fuel up at the Bulldog Spirit Pump at Hucks. A portion of your fill-up goes to support Carmi White County Unit 5 schools. And that makes you a playmaker in the community. Hucks Market, headquartered in Carmi. The alarm sounds, coffee brews, and the porch light guides your steps toward another busy day. Just like you, Invenergy Solar is up with the sun. Invenergy's Boomtown Solar Project will create up to 400 construction jobs and create enough electricity to power 40,000 American homes. Invenergy expects to invest $60 million over the project's lifetime, helping illuminate the future of all in Y County. Private investment developed on private property with public benefits. Invenergy. Start of the fourth quarter, Lady Bulldogs lead it 53-33. Cole Carter, Jason Craig with you. Hamilton County has the basketball. As Harmon has it, dribbling to her left. Picks up her dribble. Between the circles now to break. Going left side to Phelps. Phelps dribbling, leaves it off. Now in the near corner, they go to Woodrow. Pick and roll, they go down to the post. This is going to be Ashcraft with it. But a foul called on the floor against Danny Elliott, her second. We'll take out Elliott, go with a bit of a taller group here with Jaya Smith in there. Harmon to inbound, goes opposite to break, trying to go up against Rager, forces one up and gets it to go. First two-point field goal of the second half for the Lady Foxes. Seven points for Kaylee Break. And that pass deflected out of bounds. It will stay with Carmont. 
53-35. Can you imagine Hamilton County will try to intensify this pressure. The final 7-19, they throw it up ahead to Serafini who catches it. Mara picks up her dribble, now it's off to Smith and Johanna will pull it out and they'll reset the offense. Simmons goes right side to Smith. Bounce pass down low, Rager squares up and it draws a foul. It's good footwork, footwork there by Rager. Thought when she turned into the lane and didn't see him by there, I thought, no, oh, just take a dribble and go dunk it. <laughs> <laughs> and lob it in to Simmons. Wide open at the free throw line. Her shot no good, and Rager's going to pick up a foul going for the rebound. Made a good point there, Jason, <clears throat> about Rager with her footwork. As the season has gone on, she's really turned into a true post player. She kind of was that power forward type player, but now – Kind of becoming a true stretch five center for the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, she's done a real nice job posting up. She's directing the passes and putting herself in a position to get the inbound pass. Fortunately for her, the Bulldogs are taking care of business from beyond the arc. Helps drives inside, draws a foul, and they're going to call the foul on the floor. So the basket won't count. <laughs> Goes against Jaya Smith, her third. That foul on Rager, last possession, was her third foul. Smith comes out, Addie Elliott back in, 6.42 left to play. Lady Bulldogs up by 18, 53-35. Harmon to inbound, gets it in, as that's Phelps who forces one up, and Serafini able to get the rebound. Carmine breaking the pressure, Simmons into the front court. That one nearly stolen away, and it goes out of bounds. It was tipped by Ashcraft. It will stay on this end. Biggest thing here in the final six and a half minutes, take care of the ball. Serafini, baseline drive, bounce pass goes to Rager. Gets it back out, Elliott here near side. Simmons trying to post up, but Elliott swings it back over to Johanna Smith. Now near side, Simmons, baseline drive to the basket, and her layup's up and good. Nice aggressive move there by Caroline. 14 for Simmons. Lead back to 20, 55-35. We've played two minutes here in the fourth quarter. Harmon fires a right wing three, no good. Offensive rebound by Withrow, or Woodrow, excuse me. And Rager grabs the rebound and draws a foul. Woodrow is the one that fouled her second. We've seen as this year has gone on, Carmine has faced more and more teams that press in the full court. They've gotten better as the year has gone on, just like that as Mara Serafini with two more. 27 for the senior. I believe that's a season high for her. Woodrow in the far corner, it goes to Harmon. Driving on the right side, break, lays it up and in. Yeah, break didn't think twice, got a step on Rager, went right up to the rack. Back to a 20-point game, 57-37, 5.24 left to go. Elliott goes to her right. Harmon comes from behind and pokes it away. Now Phelps has it, and she is going to be called for a double dribble. She picked it up, looking to go to the outlet pass to break, who was cutting towards the basket. That's another overlooked advantage with Carmeyer, and I'm just now starting to realize it. They got four guards out there. Yeah. <laughs> Rager left top. Over to Serafini on the far side. It goes to Elliott. Cutting down low. Rager catches. Missed it. Lots of contact there from Woodrow. And then they're going to call a foul on Johanna Smith. Back in the day, it used to be just two people, and you had to pay the third guy to bring the ball up. <laughs> That's the fourth Carmi foul. We only played three minutes here in the fourth. So the next Lady Bulldog foul will mean free throws for Hamilton County for the rest of the ball game. 57-37, five minutes to play. Phelps dribbles to her right, guarded by Serafini. Mara cuts her off, dribbles back to her left, stops, puts one up in the lane, no good. Rebound by Caroline Simmons, and we're going to foul as... They're letting them play the first three quarters and 
That's seven combined fouls here in the fourth quarter. 4.43 left to play. 57-37, Lady Bulldogs looking to cruise to win number 23 on the season. Also inching near that school record, which is 27. Smith dribbles on the near side to Rager. Rager dribbles at once, picks it up, back to Mara Serafini. Simmons right top, fakes the pass down low. They'll go back to the flex offense, looking to kill some clock with 4.10 left to play. 57-37. Rager taking her time. Elliott running sprints, trying to get open, but they get it over to Simmons. Nice <laughs> lob down low to Serafini, who missed the layup. Rebound nearly went out of bounds. That was a great post up and a great pass. That might be her easiest shot of the <laughs> night. <laughs> Driving inside there is Harmon, who gets the friendly bounce. Four points for the senior Harmon. Down to an 18 point game, 57 39. 338 left to go. Elliott near side to Simmons. Top of the circle, it's Serafini dribbling to her right side. Now it's off to Rager. Now it's Smith. Right side, Serafini. Mara back to Elliott. Elliott dribbles inside, dumps it off to Serafini. Tough shot. Clinton Wolf wants a foul call, no avail. Lady Fox is the other way with Phelps. She'll throw it up, missed it. Rebound ends up in the hands of Woodrow, who misses her putback. Third chance here for the Lady Foxes. Phelps in the near corner, dribbles to her left. Now it's Harmon opposite side. Bounce pass off to Ashcraft. Now left side. They go back right to Harmon. 2.45 left to go. 57-39 Lady Bulldogs. Woodrow gets it off to break. Now back top of the key to Ashcraft in the near corner. It goes to Harmon. Harmon baseline drive is going to be bumped by... Caroline Simmons, which will be foul number five in the quarter for the Lady Bulldogs, which means free throws for the green and white for the final 232. First free throw on the way for Harmon is no good. Looking at the Carmine Lumber Regional Scoreboard. Helping to shape and assemble a better community. That's Carmel Lumber. Before you drive a nail, I'm to Carmel Lumber on 3rd Street. Only score I have so far on the evening in girls basketball. About 20 minutes ago, it was Hamilton or Fairfield leading El Dorado 25-15 at halftime. Second free throw also missed there from Phelps, but Nichols able to get the long rebound, and Johanna Smith gets that missed three-point shot. 57-39. Into the front court is Simmons. She goes back to her right, and it's off to Serafini. Carmine may just start using this as an exercise of burning clock. <laughs> Simmons near midcourt. Under two minutes left to play. 57-39. Serafini at the Fox logo. Gets it off to Elliott. Dribbles off to her left. Phelps went for the steal. Poked away and stolen away. As Brake brings it into the front court. Simmons falls down. Foxes have numbers. As Brake makes the shot, but she was fouled on the drive. Going to be free throws either way. As that foul was against Addie Elliott, that's her third. Elliott has three. Simmons has three. Rager has three. And two free throws coming up for Kaylee Brake, who's got nine points. First free throw up and good. It will be Briley Varner. First time she's checked in tonight, 5'8 freshman. And Brake's second free throw, no good. Elliott grabs the rebound. And he clears out, walks this one into the front court. 90 seconds left to play. All Lady Bulldogs leading by 17 at 57 to 40. 
Smith over to the right side here, Serafini. Serafini dribbles it left, hands it off to Elliott. That one tipped into the backcourt out of bounds. But we'll stay with Carmine. Tory Ryder checks in. As Ashton Rager is done for a night. Great job tonight by Rager. Yeah. A lot of subtle little things you don't might necessarily see on a score sheet, but she did her job. And the Gomad also checks in for the Lady Bulldogs. 114 left to play. Serafini has it. Dribbles over to her right side, off in the hands now of Caroline Simmons. Simmons dribbles to her left, off to Gomat. Get to pack to Simmons. One minute left to play. 57 to 40. Serafini at midcourt. Gets it off to Smith. Dribbles to her right. Back to Simmons. Just more or less of a wide dribble weave here as they go down low. That one intended for Johanna Smith goes out of bounds. Nice job of Caroline recognizing, hey, I've got three people. Math says somebody's <laughs> open. 43.5 seconds. Able to count making Carmine work for every second here. Inbound goes to Serafini. Missed that layup. Varner had the rebound. Now it's off to Parkland, who's into the front court. Leaves it off for Nichols. Her layup no good. Rebounded by Tori Ryder. Throws it up ahead to Serafini. Mara, one-on-one, -on -one, was fouled on the layup. So two free throws coming up for Mara. Serafini trying to add to her season high. Serafini's missed their last three shots, all three of them inside of three feet. <laughs> the three easiest shots, or three closest shots she's had all night. And her first expressway forward go. free throw was up and good. Don't get fouled by a bad buying experience. Count on Expressway Ford Mercury. And you'll always be in the bonus. Second free throw on the way for Serafini. About 29 for the senior and a huge roar. Her dad, Mikey Sr., standing up, giving her a round of applause. What a night for Mara Serafini. Final 20 seconds, 59-40. Lady Bulldogs lead it as Parkland's long three will go out of bounds with just 16.4 left to play. Carmi will improve to 23 and four on the year. They'll move to a perfect nine and zero in the Black Diamond Conference with one last conference game coming up this Thursday at home against Flora. Simmons picks up her dribble off to Smith. Now four seconds, Gomat back to Smith. Final seconds tick off the clock, and Carmi White County wins it by a final score of 59 to 40, behind 29 points from Mara Serafini. And the Lady Bulldogs are one step closer away from that perfect conference record and doing their best. They did their best tonight to get themselves a good shot at a top four seed come regional time, which we'll find out Thursday afternoon. Very good performance tonight for the Lady Bulldogs. Yeah, it, Mara just set the tone early, took a quarter off, came back and started the second half, reset the tone, kind of lost out on an extra three points at the end of the <laughs> third quarter, but fabulous job, fabulous job all the way around for all Lady Bulldogs tonight. Well win. Final score, Lady Bulldogs win it 59-40. to 40. We'll step aside for a three-minute break. Rowark Transport Post Game Show coming up next on 97.3 WRUL. Well, folks, that ain't country, but this is Skylar Harrelson from Jansen Auto and Carmi. It's been my pleasure to help my friends and neighbors get into the cars or trucks of their dreams for the last couple of years. Here at Jansen Auto, we're bringing you great vehicles at better than expected prices. There's really no reason to shop anywhere else. If we don't have it, we'll get it. All new vehicles are priced at huge discounts. Your hometown dealer, Jansen Auto Group in Carmi. Stop by and see why. The Carmichael Kiwanis Club is working hard to make a difference in the community, and it all starts with serving the children of the world. From fundraising efforts with proceeds going directly back into the community to working hand-in-hand -hand with the Key Club, Schools, Arrows Program, and much more. At the Carmichael Kiwanis Club, 
we build and we love to welcome you we meet every thursday at noon in the white county farm bureau basement come visit us for lunch a great program and learn more about how carmike kiwanis helps move our region forward hey bulldog fans it's amanda nelson with first bank we're excited to be your three for three sponsor again this season for every three point shot made out of varsity boys and girls basketball game we'll donate three dollars to carmike white county school and be sure to stop by and get your first bank bulldog debit card every time you swipe it we'll also make a donation to the school since 1893 first bank has been committed to making great things happen for carmike businesses farmers and families let's go bulldogs great things happen. first bank is there housing lender member fdic evil Light creative studio in carmite is a full service communications and design consultancy located in the heart of southern illinois we have a strong focus on small businesses schools and nonprofit organizations from t-shirts to business cards to large format banners we are excited to make your design project a reality we also specialize in video and audio production reach out to us to see how we can create something amazing together all within your budget Evil Eye Creative Studio, what can we create with you? Great teamwork is no accident. David and the gang at Hale Body Shop salute the area athletes. Just as in sports, the team at Hale Body Shop work together to make sure you get your car back as quickly as possible. When it comes to collision repair, more and more people choose the team way out there on Possum Road. Hale Body Shop in Carmine. David and the gang are proud supporters of area athletes. Roark Trucking and Roark Transport in Carmi. Driving the distance, delivering the difference. Commercial or residential. In Hydra's propane and fuel. Rock, dirt, and lime. Parking lots, driveways, and washouts. Farmers depend on Roark Trucking and Roark Transport to deliver their lime when and where they need it. Remember Roark Trucking and Roark Transport for your next job or your next haul. Fast and dependable. Call Roark Transport and Roark Trucking. 618-265-3665. Final score, Lady Bulldogs defeat Hamilton County 59-40. to Postgame show is brought to you by Roark Transport, hauling fuel, rock, grain, and more to help our community grow. Call 265-3665 for more. As I'll let Jason pass his headset over to head coach Clinton Wolf. Coach, just an outstanding effort from your girls tonight, a big conference win. Yeah, you know, uh, coming down here, we were worried about this when We were talking about last week being, you know, 0-10 last year, and, and we were 8-0 when we finished up last week. And wanted to come down here. We got, you know, two games this week, two conference games. We want to finish things off and, and go 10-0 and, and, and win this thing uh, undefeated. And this is a tough place to play. Coach Weinmiller, I know. Uh, McLeansboro, this isn't the normal Hamilton County team that he's had, uh, but but he's always going to play hard. Um, you know, very very smart coach who who does a great job with his with his kids. And this one was a little nervous. I, I was a little nerved up about this one a little bit, but our girls came out and and executed extremely well. Uh, it helps when when Mara shoots the lights out like she did. Uh, 16 in the first quarter, really really uh, you know made things really easy for us tonight. Well, you mentioned Mara Serafini, and, and you can't say. Enough about her, 29 points, a season high for her, and, and just the way that she has become this this scorer for you over the last couple mm -hmm. of years, and she really showed it tonight. Yeah, absolutely, and she shoots the ball really well, and you know, she I feel like she's our best basketball player. Obviously, she does some great things offensively, but defensively as well, and I know Phelps had 18 or whatever tonight. Um, she's a darn good basketball player, old Phelps is, but I thought Mara did a great job. Didn't let her get going from the three. She made most of her buckets, uh, you know, having to go to the bucket and earn those, a lot of free throws for her. But, you know, Mara just did a fantastic job. And then there were times, you know, all of a sudden they over-pursue on Mara, and that left Caroline open or that left Addie open. You know, Joe got a wide-open bucket based off of, you know, that one, two. All of a sudden we dribble drive, kick, kick, and then we were able to get an easy bucket. And um, – She's just done a great job for us for the last four years, and, and this year's, you know, she's a special ball player. thought the way that your girls were unselfish tonight. A lot of great passes, and like you said, attracting defenders and finding girls wide open. You know, they're in the second quarter. Mara didn't score at all, but you guys yep. were still able to keep that lead at yeah, 16. That's what I mean. They, the other girls stepping up. You know, they, they started, they ran out and got in a box and won, and we ran our offense that we have for that, and other girls got shots. You know, Caroline ended up 14 tonight. Addie had her eight, like, 
you know, it was just a great team effort. And, you know, again, Mara helps kind of drive the bus, but but we've got a lot of players that are sitting on the seats on that bus. And, and uh, you know, it's been exciting. Jason made a good point that it's your last game before the regional pairings, uh -huh. which will be on Thursday, and, and thought this was a good chance for you guys to kind of make a statement before going into that and hopefully getting a top four seed. Absolutely, and, and I thought – there with about two minutes to go in the first quarter, I thought, man, there's no chance we can come down here and run and clock these girls. And, yeah, you know, we <laughs> fell asleep, gave up a couple offensive rebounds for points, fouled a girl, put her to the free throw line. And then they made a little run on us. But, uh, you know, we've got a good basketball team, and, and we did. We, we kind of went through the motions about three to four minutes and two separate periods in this, in this game. But, you know, other than that, when we buckled down and wanted to play basketball, we showed tonight what we're capable of. Well, just three games left in the regular yeah. season now. You guys are going to be at home. Somehow that's we're down to the final three yeah, games. Crazy. But, uh, you're back at home. Final conference game of the year at Flora or at home against Flora. Uh -huh. What do we know about them? You know, we played them a long time ago, uh, back in December, early in the season. They got a Jennings girl, a senior, who's a nice basketball player. Uh, you know, Coach Fox graduated five seniors last year, so they're kind of in a rebuild rebuild mode. Um, and you know, we don't see them much, so I've got a few films on them. Uh, you know, like I said, they're they're kind of in in a rebuild. We got to we got to keep Jennings at check. We got to know where she's at. Uh, they got a couple other nice little players. If if you get lost, they can they can give you fits. But I'm extremely confident in the way our girls are playing right now, and and having an opportunity to go to undefeated in the conference, senior night at home. Uh, you know, we have a lot to play for. Our girls know that, and I, I fully expect a great effort come Thursday night. All right, thank you, Coach. Guys, appreciate the coverage. Thank you very much. That's Clinton Wolf as the. Lady Bulldogs defeat Hamilton County 59 to 49. As we'll run through the individual stat line first for Hamilton County. They got 18 points from Racy Phelps, 10 from Kaylee Brake, three from Kayla Nichols, four from Peyton Harmon, three from Annabelle Woodrow, and two from Ada Ashcraft. For the Lady Bulldogs, 29 for Mara Serafini, an outstanding night for the senior, 14 for Caroline Simmons, four for Annie Elliott, or correction, eight for Addie Elliott, four for Johanna Smith, and four for Ashton Ringer. Jason, you got team stats? For Hamilton County, they were 14 for 47 for, from the field for 30%. That included five for 20 from the three-point line. Four for eight from the charity stripe for 50%. They had 20 rebounds, nine of those on the offensive end. And they only committed two turnovers for the contest. For Carmi, 22 for 41 from the field for 54%. And it includes 14 for 28 inside the arc. They were perfect, 8 for 8 from the charity stripe, 26 total rebounds, 23 of those on the defensive end, and I had them for five turnovers. But <clears throat> heck of an effort by the Lady yeah. Bulldogs here, and I'm pretty sure this is one that Serafini is going to remember as her fail, farewell tour continues <laughs> on. That brings <laughs> us to our player of the game that's brought to you by First Bid Bank and Trust. When you partner, you can bank on, count on the great folks, at first mid bank and trust no brainer mara serafuni just an outstanding night 29 points for the uh, senior i agree with you 134 <laughs> percent great effort there had hints of could this be a 40 point game with that 16 <laughs> point outburst but you know just a monumental effort by the senior congratulations lady bulldogs will go for the perfect conference record uh, on thursday as they host floor for their final conference game as as Coach Wolf mentioned, it will be senior night. They do have one more home game next week, but Thursday will be senior night. They will honor Mara Serafini as well as Johanna Smith. We'll have action tomorrow night as the Bulldogs host Edwards County. Then Jason and Travis will have that girls game on Thursday. Boys are at home against Flora on Friday. They'll then travel to Mount Carmel on Saturday. So big thanks to Joby Wagner back at the WRUL studio. Bailey Winkleman and the lovely Whitney Carter for those of you watching on the WRUL Sports YouTube channel. For Jason Craig, I'm Cole Carter. Thanks for watching and listening to Lady Bulldog Basketball.